Well, welcome to our Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series. And today we are going to answer the question, how can AI help me paint a DNA match from dead match on DNA Painter? So this is a great question because if you are like me, you like to paint the segments that you get from chromosome browsers. And it's fairly simple from some of them like MyHeritage and Family Tree DNA. But GEDmatch is a little bit trickier to figure out where in the world you first of all find your matches and then how do you get the chromosome data. So I thought we would do a fun little tutorial on that and show how AI is actually really great in its role as a tutor to help us with this. So first of all, if you are unfamiliar with chromosome maps, here's my chromosome map. And you can see that we have got um, all sorts of different colors here. And each one of these colored bars represents a DNA match to me and a segment on my genome that we share with an ancestral couple. And I've identified several ancestral couples. They're over here on the right. And I've given them a color. And my goal is to eventually fill up this map with all the colors. So right now I'm at about 49% and working to get some of these unknown places here on my genome mapped. So of course we want to get all the data that we can to put into our chromosome maps. So what is the big deal with chromosome mapping? Well, here are some of the main points. It helps us visualize exactly which segments of your DNA come from which ancestors. And it's a, another way of confirming our paper trail research with genetic evidence. And we can actually identify new family connections through segment triangulation. If we have an unknown match and we can paint their segments and it overlaps with a specific ancestor, then we can hypothesize the line that they come through. It might help us break through our brick walls by focusing on those specific segments. And we can start seeing this pattern of inheritance across multiple generations. So here's a fun example of what that might look like. So when you are doing your chromosome map on DNA Painter, it is up to you to identify paternal or maternal matches. So you'll need to have done some work already on the testing companies and built some trees, tried to figure out who these people are so you know whether they are at least paternal or maternal, because you will have two copies of each chromosome to paint. And you can see here on DNA Painter that it says shared or both, because you might have chromosomes that are, you know, somebody like a full, um, like a full cousin could share on both, or a sibling, of course, actually not a cousin, but a sibling could share on both. And then you would have a paternal chromosome and a maternal chromosome. So when you paint a match, you can give the name of the match and the DNA company they tested with, and then you can choose the color for the ancestral couple. So here you can see chromosome 16 and the two pairs, paternal and maternal. And I've chosen to color code a bit. So we've got the red pink color coding for my maternal, and then the blues and greens are for the paternal. And here you can see a triangulated segment. I have drawn this box around it myself. DNA Painter doesn't do that for you, but I, I drew that. And this purple segment is a cousin. We share grandparents. This is a first cousin. The red um, segment is going back to the next generation for my maternal great-grandparents. And then the pink goes back a further generation to maternal second great-grandparents. So this same segment came through all of these different lines down to myself and my DNA matches. And so it's fun to see that line of DNA inheritance coming through. Now, if I got another person who was a mystery match and they matched us here, I could then look at their, how much DNA we shared, look at their trees, and then determine where they are along this, or maybe they even would be a further generation back. Now, let's skip over and talk a little bit about GEDmatch. What is GEDmatch? Well, GEDmatch is a third-party tool, and it lets you compare your DNA results across testing companies, such as Ancestry, DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, Living DNA would be another one. And it has more advanced analytical tools. So the commercial testing companies give us some tools, and each company does have its own set of tools, but GEDmatch gives us a whole array of tools we can use. 
So if we've only tested at one place and we upload to GEDmatch, we can find matches who tested at different places than we did. And we can use chromosome browsers there and comparison tools. So for instance, if you tested at Ancestry DNA, which does not have a chromosome browser, if you upload to GEDmatch, then you can use the chromosome browser there to compare to others who have tested in various places. So we have something really special when we use GEDmatch plus the DNA Painter chromosome map because then we can take our chromosomes um, that have been identified for us, the different segments on GEDmatch, and put those into our chromosome map. So one of the most valuable features of GEDmatch is the one-to-many comparison tool that shows matches across all the databases. So this expands our potential match pool significantly beyond what any single testing company offers. So we can get a lot of matches from a lot of different places and do some more comparison. The chromosome browser and segment triangulation tools in GEDmatch are particularly useful for identifying common ancestors through shared DNA segments. And then we can transfer this to DNA Painter for visualization. So I knew I wanted to do this, but I wasn't exactly sure which tools I would need to use at GEDmatch because some of the names are a little bit more challenging to understand what in the world that tool is going to do for you. So I decided this would be a really great opportunity to ask AI for help. So I went to ChatGPT and I used it in the role as a tutor. And I put in the prompt, just a really simple prompt, how do I find matching chromosome data on GEDmatch? So I, that wasn't even that specific. Uh, you know, I didn't tell it what kind of a role it was. I didn't really give it a goal. I just asked it a question and it came up with a great step-by-step -step tutorial. So it said to upload your DNA data, run the one-to-many comparison, identify a match and run the one-to-one -one autosomal DNA comparison. So I really appreciated having the names of the different tools spelled out and then giving me some steps. So could I have found this information elsewhere? Well, there were, there's probably a tutorial somewhere out there that someone else has made, maybe another video, or maybe there is, um, you know, a blog post, something. But this was just so simple and fast and gave me a list that just really told me what to do. So the first thing, I already had DNA data uploaded, so I didn't need to do that. And But it did tell me that, you know, once it's processed, you'll get a kit number. So then I understood how it worked. But then I needed to go to run one-to-many DNA comparison, and it told me where to find it and kind of how to get started. So I'd already uploaded DNA data data here. If you haven't done that, you would do that here. And then under free tools, there's one to many, but there's also a tier one, which is the paid version one to many. And so I do have a tier one for a bit. And so I decided to use that, but you could also use, you know, the free tools would be just fine as well. So I ran that. And when you do that, you have to put in a kit number, so I put in my kit number here, but if you are using someone else's kit, if you're maybe doing a project and you're using someone else's DNA, not your own, you'd put in their kit number. Alternately, you could just take any of the kit numbers that you match and put their kit number in and then find all of their matches. So having kit numbers to run against all the different tools is extremely helpful in GEDmatch. And so you simply just put that in and then you can just use the defaults. I just use the defaults. I didn't really change anything here. And notice if you wanted to find just people who match you on the X, you could certainly change it. But for this one, I want to get all the different matches on all the different chromosomes, all the autosomal um, segments that I could get. And so we ran the search. And then I came up with my list. This is my match list, just like you have a match list on the other websites. This is what your match list looks like. And I was really excited to see Sally here. And Sally's important because I had already recognized or identified her as part of my Weatherford Klein group that I'm currently working with. And she was over on Ancestry, and I could see that she was on Ancestry because over here on this column, we get to see where the DNA comes from. And so this one came from Ancestry. These are also Ancestry, just from a certain migration. Sometimes you'll see a family tree DNA 
we have a lot of ancestries here, we can see how much DNA was shared. And this was a good amount to share. So I was really interested in this. And this is the longest segment. So 25 centimorgans is a good size segment. Now, when I go over to Ancestry, just to kind of check up on who Sally is, I find that she is indeed in my Clumsy Klein and Henderson Weatherford group, and I have her direct line matched, um, you know, noted here in the notes going back. And she's my half third cousin or third cousin once removed, and she's actually a fourth cousin once removed that I have determined. So now I know a little bit more about Sally, and I know who I want to paint as her ancestral couple for the people for the segments that we share so once you find someone you always want to make sure how you connect to them so you'll be able to assign them to the right couple in your chromosome map and then the next step that chat gpt had me do was to run the one-to-one -one autosomal dna comparison and it told me to go back to the main menu and under the dna applications it's actually called free tools but there's the one-to-one -one autosomal dna comparison so this made it really easy for me to go back and select that. And then I would put in my kit number and then Sally's kit number. And then it told me what to choose, graphics and position, and then to run the comparison. So this was really helpful to have those specifics spelled out for me. And I put those in and graphics and positions was the default. So I just left it there and I hit run. And then here is the tool. And so you can see it's comparing our two kits and it's showing um, the different colors that could show up. And what I found were two chromosomes, eight and 22, that had a nice uh, segment that we matched, that Sally and I matched. And here was the chromosome data. It showed the start position, the end position for chromosome eight, and the same for 22. And this is where we match this little purple bit right here. Now, the next thing is how to, to paste that into um, my chromosome map on DNA Painter. So it was really easy. I just literally copied all of this and I copied all of this. And then over on my chromosome map on DNA Painter, I had paint a new match. And then I just pasted in that information. I didn't have to do anything special. I just copied it and I pasted it right in. And then I could preview the segments to make sure it looked like it was going in correctly. I wanted to see that it was on 8 and 22. And then when I said save the match, that's when I could say this is paternal and I could choose an ancestral couple. And so I added the match's name. And then I added that it was from... Um, ancestry via Jed match, and then I assigned it to a family group. And so it was Henderson and Clumsy Klein. And so it got the green color. And then once I had that painted, I could view just all of um, the different people who matched me on those two chromosomes on 8 and 22. And so you can see here that I have got a similar situation showing an inheritance pattern. So this blue are... Um, this, this segment is for my grandparents, my Harris Schultz grandparents, and then here's great grandparents, and here yellow is second great grandparents, and then third great grandparents are the Klein Weatherford couple. And so again, I've got a triangulated segment that is coming through the Klein Weatherford, going to Isabel Weatherford, and then going to her daughter. Um, Dora Algie Royston, and then going to my grandpa Schultz. So it's really neat to start seeing some of these segments identified as specific to an ancestral couple. And where before I could only say the segment was going back to the Royston Weatherford group. Now with this additional um, segment here from Sally, I can now say that it's going back a further generation. And I actually have another one in that same spot from another Klein Weatherford uh, cousin match. So this was really fun. And this was just a nice verification that I'm on the right track here with my segment mapping. So if you are having trouble with something with Jed match in particular, which is what we're talking about today, I would recommend asking AI for some help, ask it how to do different things, how to use it, a specific tool perhaps, but specifically if you want to do some chromosome mapping, it's a nice way to get those specifics spelled out for you so that you can easily 
get your segments on your chromosome map from GEDmatch. Thank you.